Well, my editing skills are crap, but holy crap, some movers are going to be coming soon to bring some... I got to help move some stuff, so <laughs> I got to do this fast. Uh, but my editing crap, but um, can the same thing be said about us? Stick around and find out. Blink, blong, blink, blong. Blah. Blink, blong, blink, blong. I'm screwing up all those intervals. This movie has a really cool theme. Um, I'm going to get back to that in a second. But for now, I'm Peter Franson from Spirit Blade Productions and ChristianGeekCentral.com. And this is my uncut review of Us. Let me pull out my script here. Okay. The synopsis on IMDb reads, In order to get away from their busy lives, the Wilson family takes a vacation to Santa Cruz, California, with the plan of spending time with their friends, the Tyler family. On a day at the beach, their young son Jason almost wanders off, causing his mother Adelaide to become protective of her family. That night, four mysterious people break into Adelaide's childhood home where they're staying. The family is shocked to find out that the intruders look like and talk like them only with grotesque appearances they were they didn't all have grotesque appearances they just looked a little haunted and you know a little odd uh one of them was in pretty rough shape but anyway uh okay so let's talk about the story a little bit it starts out like a grounded horror movie with a bit of a supernatural vibe is what it felt like to me the idea of these strange doppelgangers of yourself hunting you down is like so random and creepy a premise that i was hooked after after seeing the trailer, I was like, this looks really interesting. Looks like a unique premise to a horror movie, which I really appreciate because there are so many recycled ideas in horror movies that I really uh, was curious about this one. Um, but once the Mirror family is revealed and they start to explain their origins and their motivations, it really started to deflate for me. They are mirror images of the protagonist family and have been living uh, unseen underground all their lives, uh, surviving off disgusting sources of nourishment and without any of the modern uh, comforts from surface life. And when asked who they are, the mirror mother replies, we're Americans. This, along with a recurring reference to the controversial hand, Hands Across America movement in the 80s, uh, which was, if you're not familiar, an ultimately broken attempt at raising money for the poor, tipped me off that the writer slash director Jordan Peele, who also wrote and directed the politically messaged Get Out horror film in 2017, uh, had another political point, political point that he wanted to make here. And I've got no problem with that. I try to make th thematic points in my audio dramas, but this uh, go at it didn't work for me. If we're not talking about straight-up allegory, then I need a story's logic to function on its own, apart from understanding the metaphor. And when the origins of these mirror people are further explained late in the movie, it just felt so wildly contrived and science fiction-y out of left field uh, that it just didn't work for me at all. I would have liked it better if they just leaned into the metaphor more and or tried not to, you know, give any explanation for the doppelgangers at all. I think that would have just made them more weird and an unknown quantity to me that would have just been like what the crap is going on but the explanation i was like oh what <laughs> uh instead i got what felt to me like a story that didn't fully commit to being creepy and didn't fully commit to expressing its message and didn't even fully commit to being a horror movie. Uh, soon after the initial reveal of the doppelgangers, the movie starts frequently incorporating tension relieving and for me even tension preventing jokes and one-liners, which I have just become more and more common in, in, in movies today, uh, like th that are geek genre movies anyway. It also had a real lack of psychological realism, I think, considering the horrifying experiences this young family is having and what they are forced to do in order to survive. I kid you not, they were debating at one point with each other about who has the highest kill count against the doppelgangers in order to settle which family members should get to drive the car as they're preparing to escape their pursuers. Uh, really odd. I felt unsure of exactly what message also the filmmaker wanted me to hear, especially since I had to Google Hands Across America after watching the movie in order to better understand his use of it in this story. It's a dated reference and, uh, you know, I was born in 78, so I was still too young at the time to really be aware of the movement, you know, when it actually happened. And so, uh, yeah, I had to 
like, okay, hands. Okay, this is. I can tell this is part of his message. I better go <laughs> Google this. So, and and I also felt unconcerned ultimately for the family being terrorized because of all the things that they did to relieve slash prevent tension. Um, I did like the cast though, and I thought that they really did a great job connecting uh, me with what the uh, the intended feel I think was was in each in a given moment. You know, um, these actors played two different versions of themselves in the main family. Um, and they, they aren't the only ones. I um, won't say more on that. But in all those cases where doppelgangers were involved, I felt like the actors gave two very distinct performances. I mean, I frequently forgot that the same actor was playing both roles in many cases, you know, thanks also in part to visual effects and, uh, and editing. Um, the use of children in the cast was also done well, which I really appreciate. So often in movies, ch child actors will be asked to emote in ways that they are just not equipped as actors uh, to do. They're not, they just not seasoned enough in life. You know, there, there are the rare Dakota Fannings, you know, who can really emote well. But a lot of times these kids can't really, they can't cry. They can't convincing, convincingly uh, be scared, you know. Um, and so it, it can be a tough ask to get a, a child actor to do a number of things. Uh, and so I like it when scripts are written and directors carry out their task in a way that doesn't ask too much of the kids that are playing uh, roles in their movie and instead plays up their strengths and conceals potential weaknesses. Uh, and I felt like these roles were written and designed and directed in a way that certainly did that. Um, there was a mask on the evil doppel doppelganger of the youngest child, and I think that might have prevented some of the inherent weaknesses of child acting from potentially showing. Maybe not. Maybe the kids of Dakota Fanning. I don't know. But it, I just thought it was an, a, a, a clever way to design that role so that it could be filled by a number of child actors that might not be Dakota Fanning's. Um, so I think this movie is a great example of how to use kids in a film uh, in a way that plays to their strengths and conceals potential weaknesses. Uh, stunts and visuals, I won't comment much on that. Most of it's practical. Great work with the doubling, um, although most often Often that's done through editing and separated takes cutting back and forth. I really liked uh, the main theme of this movie. The, uh, it's used in the trailer and also prominently at the climax of the movie. It's haunting and creepy and pounding at the same time. Really enjoyed that. So what about the themes? Well, the movie repeatedly references Jeremiah 1111. Uh, the furniture people are here. I gotta wrap this up. Um, in part, I think because the, of the mirror-like quality of the chapter verse reference of, you know, 1111, but also for the text, which though not quoted in the movie reads, therefore thus says Yahweh, behold, I am bringing disaster upon them that they cannot escape. Though they cry to me, I will not listen to them. That's from the ESV. The context of this verse is a warning of God's punishment on the ancient nation of Israel because they had turned away from Yahweh to serve idols. I think it's possible Jordan Peele intended that as a parallel to American culture pursuing modern idols today. But of course, we, you know, we still want to avoid, uh, 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 and we want to avoid uh, misapplying scripture and try to understand the intended context for words in the Bible and be cautious uh, applying them outside of that. But since the script never quotes the text and only the kind of the coordinates, as it were, I'm not confident that there was much at all intended there. As I said earlier, the message wasn't clear enough to me for in, in the film. Unless the intended message is nothing more than we should be concerned for the poor in America, which is a good message. Uh, but am I also supposed to feel afraid that if we neglect the poor, they might become evil and kill us unless we kill them first? So, uh, yeah. Yikes, you know, really some mixed signals there. Uh, but of course, as believers, we should invest in caring for the poor, as scripture tells us to. Uh, we might each use different avenues to do that. Some may want to push for that to be done through our government and our taxes. Uh, personally, I think there's some use for that, but that we shouldn't place the responsibility on the secular government and as individual followers of Christ should be looking for ways to care for the poor independent from or in addition to anything that the government might do with our tax money. Um, if this movie can somehow bring positive attention tension and in some almost accidental roundabout way uh, to that godly mission, then, you know, I'm all for that. Uh, I have no idea what your tastes are in movies, but if I were a time traveler, I'd go back in time and say, Peter, ah, oh, man, skip this one. Enjoy the cool, creepy trailer. The reality is going to disappoint you quite a bit. It's rated R for violence slash terror and language. All right, those are my thoughts. I'd love to get yours in the comments below. This month, if you're a patron of any tier at patreon.com slash spiritbladeproductions, I'm making our genre-bending sci-fi fantasy audio drama Spirit Blade uh, free f forever. And that's first for patrons this month, later for everyone else uh, later this year. Um, and that, that includes an all-new video version with text commentary 
commentary, taking you behind the scenes. For more information, you go to patreon.com slash spiritblade productions. Uh, and then please like, share, subscribe, click that notification bell. Anything you want to do to spread this content, I'd be really grateful for. Uh, and then I hope you'll join us over at christiangeekcentral.com as we continue to geek out <sighs> and seek the truth. All right, time to go move some furniture. I'm not 